Welcome to The Life of Hair. My name is James Atkinson. Now in today's episode, I have got a haircut straight out of my hair column, my working column. In some of the comments, a few of you had asked to see some of the work that I do in the salon, and that would be of interest to you. So what I've gone and done is I filmed myself cutting hair in the salon and some of my clients. So this one today is one of my regular clients. I really love doing their hair. It's a great haircut and one that hopefully you guys can use in your day-to-day -day lives too. And it will give you a little insight into the sort of styles that I like to create on my clients and hopefully give you some inspiration for your clients. So I hope you enjoy it. And if you do, then don't forget to smash that subscribe button. Give it a thumbs up. It really helps the videos get out there. If you do, it is your gift to me. And leave me a comment for any other suggestions for videos that you may want me to make in the future. It really, really is lovely to speak to you guys in the comments. I do my absolute best to get back to every single person who leaves a comment. And it's increasing the amount that people who are leaving comments, so that is wicked. Thank you guys. Uh, but if it does take me a day or two to come back to you, then I do apologize. Uh, it's just one of those things, but I will get back to you, I promise. Have a wonderful week, and I'll see you again very, very soon for another episode of The Life of Hair. First things first, with this haircut, we're going to create a nice, even horseshoe-shaped section that runs through the parietal ridge on the side of the head, just under the crown, and through to the front recession on the opposite side. Once we're satisfied that our horseshoe is even on both sides, we can simply clip it up out of the way. This will give us a better chance of achieving symmetry on our layering underneath. The first thing that we need to do is take our guide section. This is a one to one and a half centimeter wide section that we're going to pull straight out from the head and cut 90 degrees parallel to the head shape. This will retain some length on the perimeter. The length of our first section is very, very important to the outcome of the entire haircut. So I would say, unless you're 100% sure, always cut that section slightly longer than you would like it. Double check for length and then reduce it down further if necessary. But if you are satisfied with the length that you will cut it to, then move on to your next section take a one centimeter or one and a half centimeter parallel section to your previous section taking nice neat sections as you work the cleaner and the neater the sections that you take the easier cutting short hair is the other thing to watch for when we're cutting hair that is short is consistently damp hair hair as you may well know is more elastic when it is wet and therefore, if the hair starts to dry out as we work around the head, the elasticity will change and this can create more difficulty when cutting hair. The other thing to watch for as well, and I know this seems like a lot of things to watch for, but there are a few, is the tension in your fingers. You will note I never cut past my second knuckle on my hand. This is because I know on my fingers that the tension changes past this point. The other thing to watch out for when you're cutting short hair is the change in length between the nape and the sides. The hair obviously goes up and around the ears in the sides and this can cause us problems dependent on the haircut we're trying to achieve. In Corey's haircut here, I want to retain a lot of length on the perimeter on the sides. So I'm going to change the angle of which I am cutting the hair once I get to that section. But until I get to that section, I can remain working square to the head shape, pulling the hair square straight out from the head. Now, at this point, I am changing the angle 
of my section to a more diagonal forwards section. I'm still using my previous section as a guide at the top, but as I travel towards the perimeter edge, I am angling my fingers away from the face shape, creating more length and softness for Corey's haircut. It is very important that we make allowances for changes of hair texture and density if our end result requires something that is going against what the natural hairline wants to achieve. I think it's very important that we cut these sections slightly longer than we might want them in the end so that we can refine later if necessary. On this right hand side I'm simply going to do exactly what I did on the opposite side, one to one and a half centimetre sections, pulled straight out from the head shape, cut square through to the perimeter. Even tension throughout and clean, clean sections. Remembering, once we meet the change of hair density on the hair outline, we change our angle of our section to diagonal forward and we point our fingers away from the face shape to leave extra length. Once we have finished cutting both sides, then it's very important that we cross check our work for balance. Once I'm satisfied with that, I'm going to take a diagonal backwards section and pull the hair straight out from the head shape, traveling towards the face. This is to create extra softness around Corey's face, giving me extra texture once I've finished the look, as the hair will be worn forward. Once we are satisfied with our sides and back, then I'm going to cut the top in natural fall. I simply comb the hair out into natural fall and take a vertical section from the crown straight through to the front hairline. I'm going to cut this square to the head shape. That means that we'll be left with slightly more length towards the face shape as the head naturally curves down towards the forehead. I'm going to work in a spiral format for this particular haircut, which means that I'm going to take parallel sections that pivot all the way around till I reach the other side. This is one of my favorite ways of working, especially when it comes to texture on shorter haircuts like this. Making sure that the tension is the same and we're pulling the hair straight out from the head shape. I know a lot of people like to cut one side then the other when it comes to cutting the top. So for instance, cut all the way to the center back from the center section that you originally cut and then go around and do the left hand side and work your way back to the middle. This is fine also. You could do this for this haircut if you wished. This is just a slightly different way of doing it and one that I quite enjoy. As we travel around to the center of the haircut again here, 
you'll note that we just have to work slightly past the center in the crown area. And you'll once I cross check, you'll see that we have got exactly the same length all the way over. Here I'm cross checking, now cross checking is working in the opposite direction to the way that you cut the hair to ensure that you have got even clean haircut throughout. And this is Corey's finished look. A very, very indie rock and roll haircut. One that I absolutely love, love, love cutting on Corey's hair. He's been a client of mine for a fairly long time now and I really, really enjoy it every time he comes in. Thank you for watching this episode. If you enjoyed it, then hit that thumbs up button because there's loads more videos coming and I will see you again next Sunday for another episode of The Life of Hair.